Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the CNBC TV18 Mumbai News Center. I'm Pavitra Parekh. With me is Sonal Bhutra. You're tuned in to Mutual Fund Corner. And today we are going to be discussing all about ESG funds. Sonal, there's been so much action in this space. Tell us more about this and what did the flows really look like? Oh, well, yes, there has been a lot of momentum. And the term ESG itself has gained a lot of momentum, right, during the pandemic. And so did ESG investing as well. Now, let's talk about flows here because flows into ESG funds, they've continued, but in the recent quarter, that is quarter three of calendar year 2022, these flows have slowed down a bit. Global sustainable funds saw inflows of $22.5 billion. This compares with inflows of $33.9 billion in the quarter gone by. So that's a quarter on quarter decline. Total assets also slipped marginally though to $2.24 trillion versus $2.28 trillion in June. But of course, that did not stop managers from introducing new ASG products. Close to 148 new sustainable funds hit the shelves and as per a report by Morning star, flows in the sustainable funds have been much better than those in broader markets. And if we talk about region-specific data, Asia X Japan recorded net inflows of nearly $600 million. However, if we talk about India and Hong Kong, both of them experienced net outflows. India at $59 million and Hong Kong came in at $24 million. So there has been some sort of trepidation as far as flows are concerned. But you know, Pavitra, while we've been talking about global numbers, we've also been talking about what's happening here. Uh, give us more details as to what is happening in India. We do not have a lot of ESG funds here. Uh, but tell us, what do these numbers look like as far as performance is concerned? Very interesting, Sona. So let's take a look at some of the top ESG funds. Now, I'm going to take a look at uh, you know the largest ones by size so I've compiled data on the top five by size for this piece the highest AUM is for the SBI Magnum Equity ESG fund so that is at almost 4700 crores there you have it on your screen but take a look at the next four because it drops sharply after that so this one really stands out you know in terms of size the number two fund by size has only around 1700 crore in assets this then drops to around 1300 crores for the number three and number four and then the fifth largest fund by size has an AUM of around a thousand crores so that's on size but let's now talk about how the returns have been in this space I've looked at the one year and two year growth on your screens and remember a lot of these funds are only you know two years old so this is the kind of data that we have the SBI Magnum equity fund that is seen 1.5 percent so this is for you know um, the one year thing and in fact most two of these funds for one year have actually seen negative returns around 8 to 9.5 percent that is the kind of negative returns that you've seen the rest of them have been quite flat like I pointed out the SBI fund or the ICICI pro but things do look better when you increase the time horizon a bit so for a two-year period we have the SBI fund the largest one which has clocked in a big return of 18.6 percent this is followed by ICICI pro which is at 13 percent like you can see on your screen you then have Aditya Birla at 12 Kotak at 11 and Axis at 10 remember these are the five largest funds that I'm talking about so that's how these funds have fed you know so while there has been this big focus on the ESG theme like Sonal was pointing out the funds at least in the past year have not done that much so what is investor interest really looking like? Let's ask Swaroop Mohanty, CEO of Mirai Asset Investment Managers on the show now. Swaroop, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. And, you know, this is my first question to you. Yes, this became a really hot topic at one point. We are seeing declines, right, in, in terms of the flows into this category. What do you think is going wrong? And um, is this a trend that you expect will continue? Yeah, at the outset, Pavitra and Sonal, thank you so much for having me on your show and that too on a subject like ESG. Yes, I think, you know, when you look at the India ESG space, the majority of the Indian ESG schemes have been launched in the last couple of years, like you rightly pointed out. The track record essentially is very small to sort of comment or with conviction as yet. However, when you look at what Sonal had put up on, on the global flows, and the flow into ESG funds recently, globally, too, had sort of slowed down. Investors at this moment, I think, seems to have prioritized capital preservation over any other goal, say climate change, at least at this moment, given concern of, of, of say, global recession, inflationary pressure, rising interest rates, and simply put, the supply chain issues. ESG funds, by nature, tend to have slightly overweight exposure to technology and consumer discretionary sector, which are essentially seen as environmentally friendly, but are also underweight to energy and, say, fossil fuel sectors. It is important to address, and let me be very clear on this, that it is very important to address that ESG funds are not 
immune to general macro environmental exposure. Despite this, the global funds, like Sonal rightly pointed out, attracted nearly 22.5 billion net new money. In the same period, you know, uh, the broader market fund saw an outflow of nearly 198 billion of net outflows. But I also think it's a special situation in the world with possible shortage of electricity and possibilities of Europe moving to coal. This essentially goes against the basic thought of ESG and hence some would take a, be taking a pause to watch the space is my submission. Okay, uh, so to take that point, there has uh, there ha a lot has happened, of course, during the pandemic as well. But if you give us a primer as to what is the difference really between traditional investing and ESG investing, if an investor is going ahead and looking at these two segments, what are the differences that he should look at? See, simply put, ESG investing is a systemic incorporation of the environmental, social and governance factors which are material to performance and benefit to the society. It is a more holistic analysis than, say, traditional investing. E ESG integration is often pursued as, as a means of improving investment performance along with positive impact on the people and the planet. So hence, ESG integration as an investment strategy doesn't explicitly focus on assessing the particular positive impact. It aims at improving the investment framework by integrating ESG risks into the process so that any materialistic risk which can which are going beyond the financial numbers can be highlighted and flagged off. Simply put, when we look at traditional investing till the way it's happened in India so far, we look at the balance sheets, look at the profitability of the company, incorporate some amount of governance into forming an analysis of the portfolio stocks. But this is where Traditional investing stops is where ESG starts. It's incorporating the social angle and the environmental factor. So hence, it is a far more broader sort of uh, uh, implication than just traditional investing. All right, got that. Swaroop, thanks a lot for explaining that for all of our viewers in such simple terms. But you know, my next question is that recently the SEBI chief spoke about how mutual funds need to have well-disclosed rules while investing in ESG funds. Do you think if there are more regulations in this space, there will be enough money that, you know, will continue to flow in here? Because India still is not seeing that much in terms of traction. See, that's a very, very important question. When you look at it globally, globally ESG and sustainable funds came into existence after the institutional in their early days, institutional investors, I meant, in their early days. And then subsequently, retail investors have demanded exposure to only companies that are not expected to, uh, to be sustainable for the benefit of people and planet. Asset managers have responded after that by floating funds. In India, it's the other way around. Asset managers have already floated the sustainable funds. We saw a list in front of you. There are more lists than that. We are the only passive ESG in the market. Uh, uh, floated the funds and now are expecting investors to come up uh, with demand of, it, of this space. I see there is no uniformity in the terms of underlying data and that is a concern and that makes it very challenging for investors for cross comparison. In such cases, well disclosed rule is a welcome move. We need to understand that ESG is at a very nascent stage in India and all the stakeholders, including the regulator, need to evolve as the understanding improves over the period of time. In the long run, while India is expected to be one of the fastest growing economies, it has to resolve various challenges in terms of ESG. Make no mistake on that. India has consistently been one of the largest emitters of greenhouse gases, and it was ranked fifth most vulnerable country when it comes to climate change amongst 181 countries in the Climate Risk Index. 2020, as per report published by the German Watch, right? As per study conducted by the International Labour Organization also, India would be the most impacted country due to the heat wave and that we are facing in our lives as we speak. Mm -hmm. It is estimated that by 2030, and that's as close by 2030, India will lose an aggregate of 5.8% of its working hours, which would roughly translate to 34 million of full-time job losses. That is the impact. Mm. Over the time, the investors will catch up with the importance and once recognition of ESG factors comes in, we are sure funds will start like, you know, in the US or, or in the Europe. It is a, a broad part of their investing and then it's a matter of time. 
Oh, yes, it is. And thankfully, India is one of those countries which is able to fulfill its national determined contributions ahead of time. So, yes, there is hope. But in that case, Varup, what do you think when we're talking about it being at a nascent age, uh, nascent stage? Uh, what are the challenges and risks faced uh, in ESG investing? What do you think could be the possible reason why people are not going ahead investing in ESG funds? See, the current situation is slightly special because, you know, investors are preferring capital preservation over other goals, goals at this moment, not only in India, globally also, okay? Further, you know, ESG funds as a concept still require a lot of investor education, and I'm happy we are doing programs like this, and awareness that needs to be done on a sustainable basis, not a one-off sort of discussion. The most important challenge and the risk in ESG investing is the risk of greenwashing. Lack of defined methodology is what, what constitutes uh, ESG and running the risk of just labeling it. I am remembered, I am reminded of my mid 90 days when, you know, credit rating was in a similar sort of phase in India. And today credit rating is, is a far more defined phase than it was. ESG will go through a very similar sort of journey and then all these uh, uh, generalization or a defined sort of methodology will evolve. And that's when we'll get confidence of investors. All right, so maybe that could take some time. But right now, at least the good part is that, you know, we have st we have started looking at this space and we are making progress, even if it is at such a nascent stage. Swarup, I request you to please stay on because we have to get into a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back in two and then we'll continue our discussion on this entire ESG theme. Welcome back. You're still with us on Mutual Fund Corner and we still with, have with us Varup Mohanty, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Mirai Asset Investment Managers and we are talking about ESG investing. Uh, so Swarup, we have discussed a lot of cons, pros, what's happening as far as flows are concerned. But say an investor wants to go ahead and wants to do impact investing, investing in ESG funds, what kind of parameters does he have to look at? How much should they allocate to such funds according to you? So, you know, while it's spoken in the same breath, but mm -hmm. you know, impact investing is very different from your normal ESG investing. Impact investments are mostly, you know, done through closed-ended PE or VC funds, with debt funds gaining popularity more recently amongst impact investors. Many of the impact investing are generally assigned or associated with the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, which are the SDGs as they're popularly called. Imagine, see, impact investing provides capital to address world's most pressing challenges in sectors. Impact investors have diverse financial return expectations. Some are not focused on returns also, and instead focus on making this positive impact in line with their strategic objectives. Other pursue market competitive and market beating returns. Some sometimes, you know, required by the fiduciary responsibility of, of the nature of the business. In ESG investing, especially those that incorporate ESG risks into their investment framework are always aligned with earning at least market or more than market returns. That's the objective of fund. Once they come in, otherwise, why should one invest is, is, is also a fact. All right, that definitely makes sense. Uh, Swaroop, you know, we were talking about the ESG funds in India at the start of the show as well. And the fact is that there are still not that many, right? There are just a handful which are being offered. Do you think AMCs are holding back and there's still uh, very little interest in this space and not much in terms of, you know, launching more funds like these? Yeah, I, I, even I, like I've been discussing earlier, ESG funds in India have flown from asset managers to investors. Yeah. It has started its journey at, as a push product. You know, that's how we are at this moment. The moment we stand up and talk about ESG, people have their own views on ESG. But generally, when there is a product in the push category, many would like to wait and watch and see how it evolves. And, and after some period of time, when it gains some popularities, people come in. That has been the history of our industry. I wish it were the other way around, but that's, that's how it works. <laughs> of course, we'll uh, have to see uh, whether we are able to push more of ESG products. That's, of course, the AMCs. But, you know, we have listed out some of the ESG funds, of course. But according to you, out of which, if an investor has to go ahead and take a pick, which one should it be? Or there's still more data required here? See, I, it's a fact that, you know, the performance track record of various funds are very small to comment on anything at this moment. You just put up a two-year track record and one is investing in the equity Two years is not exactly the time frame that one can go by in, in assessing, you know. 
more important, I think the performance investors should be keen on are the investment framework and methodology of what constitutes ESG at this moment. They have to dig into these funds and check if they are actually following a certain framework or not. And if that framework appeals to the investor, then then uh, uh, the performance or, or the way the fund performs will will be an outcome is, is a fact. Okay. Um, you know, Swaroop, the other thing is that since the ESG fund is also a kind of thematic fund, right? It could have a cyclical nature. What kind of investors do you think are perhaps, um, you know, should look at these funds or what funds are these um, best suited for? I have my own personal views on ESG being called a thematic fund. Yeah, we would love to hear those it, views. <laughs> <laughs> but just keeping it aside, you know, unless and until your ESG funds deal with an exclusion criteria only, then will investors in stock not falling under this category fulfill the criteria. I mean, ESG funds don't tend to be cyclically, you know, typically they're not very cyclical. A lot of ESG funds in India are broad-based and not heavily skewed towards particular sector. Please understand when you're in market cap investing, it is the market cap which takes precedence over the basic sectors or, or you know, the, if you look at the index, it's now 40% financials. Yeah. But that's not how ESG works. ESG is the business and the quality of the business at the forefront and market caps takes up its backseat. You know, that's that's the basic difference. In, investors should look at ESG funds that are broad-based relatively to, which are not sector, which are basically sector agnostic or, or have a broad sector representations. Investors can also look at such funds that are, you know, that incorporate the ESG risk into their investment criteria and their, you know, the criteria of this holding period. It's called responsible investing for a reason. For me, you know, when there is a fund and there is an ESG fund at a same performing level, the tick should be towards the ESG because at the end of the day, you are doing something good and still making money. And this is what is the hindrance. It is not possible to think that you will do good and still make money. <laughs> That's what is the concept of ESG, and it takes some time for it to percolate down. As the climatic conditions and all impact your normal life, your awareness will also grow. And this whole thing of that, if you're doing good for your people and the planet, obviously it will lead to profit is, is just something which will load on to people. And then, you know, things will be very different. That's why I believe it is not a theme, it's a core product, because it is sector agnostic, it is, you know, market cap agnostic, it aims at giving you a collection or a selection of, of companies which are structurally sustainable businesses, structurally businesses which are responsible for the society and to the planet, and it's only good that you own such portfolios. It is not a theme, let me make mm -hmm. no mistake on that conclusion of mine. So it is not a theme, not really cyclical. We take your points, Varoop. Uh, but just a quick word, because you've been uh, in the markets for so long. You've seen products across categories. You've seen some products being introduced, uh, going out of the market as well. Do you really think there is a strong investor interest into ESG funds? Is this theme something that will only grow from here? Or do you think it's just a fad for now? See, at, at this moment, the uh, the commentary around us is a lot of fad because, you know, let's see what's happened. And I did point out that you're seeing the biggest part of the world which took to ESG uh, uh, investing going through a complete U-turn on electricity. And, and hence, there is a question of whether this is sustainable or not. Such things will happen uh, over a period of time. And now, till you see... So no, nothing happens till it does not happen to you. India has to face those situations. Why have investors there risen to this occasion? It's the investors that have to demand. I mean, until now, it's a regulatory push. It's a fund push. It's only when in investor awareness grows and the numbers of you know ESG investing also add up to giving sustainable returns that, that there will be a consensus of this. But we are too early into the game and, and it will take some time for that awareness to start. But it is not something which will go away. This will form only a bigger part of, of investing as we speak. And we have to learn more about ESG. The rules have to become firm and, and the regulations around it have to also develop to form it, to make it more sustainable and, and uh, uh, time-tested over a period of time. 
All right, we definitely agree with you on that. And you know, since there's such a good motive behind it, it would only uh, be right if this sticks around. So we hope that that does happen. Swaroop, thanks a lot for joining us today, answering all of us all of our questions on this ESG theme. But that's it from Sonal and me on the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. And remember, closing bell comes up next to take you through the last hour of trade. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 23 years of business leadership.